Ed, go ahead and take it away when you're ready. Thank you, Kim. Uh, also with us today from Waterway Guide is Ted Staley in the darkened room. So Ted, good to see you there. You, you don't have a light on your face, do you? But we, we can see the lamp behind you. There you go, that helps a little bit. Uh, Ted may jump in along the way. Um, it, where do we start? Uh, first of all, this is, uh, I'll have to tell these folks that I'm on another call. I thought I turned that off. I apologize, everyone. I'm back, thank you. Um, Waterway Guide um, is a great partner of America's Great Loop Cruises Association for a lot of reasons. Uh, first and foremost, we love the lifestyle that AGLCA uh, members, uh, folks who are preparing to do the loop, folks who have been on the loop, um, uh, involve themselves in. Waterway Guide was founded in 1947. If you came in late, you, maybe you didn't see that uh, uh, we're on a 1947 flagship boat for Waterway Guide. We bought it to kind of celebrate the 70th anniversary of the company, and now we're going into the 75th anniversary. So for 75 years, Waterway Guide has been publishing content. If we had had this presentation, oh, let's say uh, 30 years ago, we would have just told you about the four or five books that we publish uh, and that we've been publishing them since 1947. Today, Waterway Guide is a whole new company uh, under the ownership and leadership of Jeff Jones and Graham Jones and all of the editors and folks that uh, work in our company today. And when I say it's a different company, it's a 21st century company. Not only are we continuing to produce all of the books, we're now publishing 21 publications devoted to cruising America's waterways, but we're also producing um, mobile apps, uh, what we call a web application. Um, we have data delivered across multiple platforms. I'll talk about that briefly. So if you have Aquamap the, uh, or iNavix, which are these mobile apps, you'll find waterway guide information embedded inside those apps. So our lunch and learn today is to simply say, look, I'm gonna show you real quick, because that's 20 minutes is not much, and now we're down to about 15. We're gonna show you where to go to find the information that you need to feel safe, comfortable, and informed when you're on, uh, on the water. Uh, and uh, we'll go through all the different publications. If you're familiar with Waterway Guide, bear with us. Uh, you may have some questions if this is the first time you've ever heard about the company and, and you're starting your uh, cruiser uh, concept and adventures and you wanna learn about that, stay with us. We're gonna move fast and furious, but as uh, Kim said, uh, this will be available later to look at, but it's real simple. You can start where I'm starting, which is waterwayguide.com. So it is the 21st century. Look up in the upper left, you see waterwayguide.com. That's the jumping end point for Waterway Guide. This is what we call Explorer. And we came up with that name when we revised the website uh, because it really is about exploration. And if you notice across the top, of the blue bar, there's a, there's a word that says subscribe. I'm gonna to get to that in a moment. There is the Explorer proper, there's a directory, there is information about our mobile app, news and events, and shopping. When you log into waterwayguide.com, you're going to get this main screen like I have here. Now, I am in Cape Charles, Virginia, on the Waterway Guide flagship Adonia. I'm sitting at the dock. I've been here uh, at the Yacht Center for a month. We put her in the water yesterday, and I'm coming to you live from there using my cell phone data uh, and uh, logging in to this entire event. So uh, this is not a heavy data consumption platform. It's pretty, pretty easy. Our Explorer website knows where I am because I gave it permission. So right away in the window when I logged in, Cape Charles, Virginia came up. Well, I'm gonna hit the word go. As soon as I hit go, I'm now delivered a map in map mode and a picture of Cape Charles with some information in it. On the left side of the screen is what we call the info pane. That is where the information that appears in the center of your screen can be seen for further detail. And as I roll over them, I get a pop-up box. Very simple stuff. We default to marinas first and foremost, but if I go to the top of this bar and I do this drop-down menu, I can also look in this location for services. I can look and you'll see a wrench, which means if my boat needs working on, I can go to that service facility. I can look for anchorages and free docks, big anchor symbol comes up here. I can look for bridges and locks. There are no bridges in Cape Charles that I need to worry about. I can look for navigation alerts. There are none here, but I'll show you some in a moment. Is there fuel nearby? Yes, and there are fuel prices associated with it. 
those fuel prices are updated either by the facility or by waterway guide and you should always check the date on them to see when the last time it was updated oyster farm updated it on the 6th of may which was today <laughs> is today and this is the prices that they have for fuel and then i also have fuel for gas and gas is a different color so that's the basic outline of explorer and the information that's available if I go over to the left side of the screen, there are a series of navigation bars here. And I'm really turning this into an Explorer tutorial because this is important for you to understand if you're gonna use it, what all of these symbols mean. First and foremost, I can compare marinas with this little comparison, this marina comparison table that shows me what vessels, total transient slips, and other information that's available to me if I want to compare marinas. If I want to measure a distance from somewhere to, an, and I can, by the way, these toggle. If I want to measure a distance, I click the little ruler and I can say, well, I'm going to go from Cape Charles up to Cherry Stone Creek, and then I'm going to turn right and I'm going to go into this little creek here. It's 3.71 miles. All I did was turn on the ruler over here. When I get finished, I can either hit the escape button, click on the ruler again, and if I wanted to export that data, it would give me the information. I'm not going to export it. I'm going to cancel. The next is add an icon. Very interesting component here, part uh, related to crowdsourcing uh, in the world of navigation today. If you were out cruising and you found a really nice anchorage right up here in Cherry Stone Creek, you could say, I want to add an anchorage and let the world know. And you could come up here and place the anchor right there. And then it's going to prompt you with your name, email, vessel, all the information necessary, and you're gonna submit that. And guess who's gonna get that? Ted's gonna get that. <laughs> Ted's gonna look at that and he's gonna say, okay, Ed, you just put an anchor at your cherry stone, but you didn't give me all the information I needed. Could you add this to it? Or, hey, great information, super, we're gonna put that in the database and we're now giving that information to everyone. The same thing if you wanted to add a service facility or a marina or a navigation alert. All you would have to do is click on this plus sign and you can add it for the rest of the world to see. All right, I've been looking at street map view and I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the plus down here to zoom in. So I'm in Cape Charles, I'm zooming in because I wanna see someone said, hey, come visit me, I'm over on Monroe Avenue. I can see now if I'm here at, at, at the marina. And by the way, I'm in gas mode. So I'm gonna drop down and go back to marina mode. I'm sitting at the marina and I need to go here, I'm in street mode. But suppose that I wanted to see the NOAA chart for that area. I simply click on NOAA and there's a traditional NOAA chart. Do I want to look at Navionics because I'm familiar with that interface and there's the depths and the information available. So I have, and if I like a satellite view, I can simply click on that. This is what's called a hamburger menu. It looks like a bun with a, you know, three pieces in the middle of like a sandwich menu, but this will give you the information you need to select the maps and the backgrounds that you want. If I want to find my location, I can click on this button. On a phone, it uses your GPS. On a computer, it uses a cell tower signal area, so it will go find you accordingly. And then if you want to put north up, you simply click on this. Um, I'm gonna try to manipulate my screen, but I'm gonna use two fingers on my touch screen, and I can start spinning the map to any direction that I want to go. I can also, if I'm not mistaken, I've got to figure out how to do it, do a bird's eye view, but you can right click and do a bird's eye view. But if I want to center the map back to north, I simply click that, it takes it back to north. And it's known as a slippy map. I can slide and slip it to where I want it to go. Okay, so that's a quick overview of our Waterway Explorer map functionality. Notice that as I zoom in, there are marinas here. Now let me show you what information we deliver up on a marina. So I'm looking at a featured marina, I click on it, and I get a pop-up box that says it's at mile marker this, the Cape Charles, here's the full listing. Let's take a look at the full listing for that marina. We carry about 300 data points on every single marina. So as I look at this, I can scroll up at my basic information on page one and click on reservations. It will tell me how much it costs, approach and docking. I'm going across the yellow slabs, amenities and facilities, what's available, what is nearby, restaurants, specials and events, points of contact. Then I can come over here and click on voter reviews. What do others say about this? Let's see. 
somebody on April 30th was here and said, way overpriced for what you get at $3 a foot. Cape Charles Town Harbor, reviewed by Chuck. Stayed here for Thanksgiving. Great location, right next to town. This guy likes it. Very nice. Super convenient to town. You're paying for at 225, nice floating docks, but no laundry, no Wi-Fi. So that's one of the other marinas uh, that are here in the area. So you can look at what others say and then make your own decisions accordingly. So I've clicked back on the map. I'm back to where I am. That's Explore. Let's talk a little bit about the directory that sits up at the top. You can come in here and find the same information using a directory. We have just launched a brand new mobile app and the mobile app can be described here. This is now downloadable. All of the waterway guide content is available on your mobile device. We have three of our uh, seven or eight main titles in the app at this point. I would encourage you to go check that out. It is a free download for the basic functionality. And then you start purchasing the books and content that you want inside the app. There is a news and events section to waterway guide that allows you to search for different regions and information that you may find. You get a newsletter every Wednesday from us and a navigation alerts newsletter every Friday from us once you sign up. Here are all of the books of Waterway Guide. You should be familiar with these if you're getting ready to do the Great Loop. Atlantic ICW, Bahamas, Chesapeake Bay, Cuba, Florida, Great Lakes, the Northern Southern Editions and Western Gulf Coast. And then finally, there is a subscription model. In the subscription model, which is different than the app, you can subscribe and once you subscribe, which I am because I work there, I can look at my information, my profile, what boats I have in here, and I have now access to the guide content that I want to look at. So if I wanted to look at the Chesapeake Bay and look at chapter one, I simply click on that and now chapter one of Chesapeake Bay will download and I can read that content on my computer or my mobile device. I will submit to you that the computer is a better reading uh, experience with the content than uh, a small telephone or a small mobile device, but you have the content through subscription that way. So that is an overview of Waterway Guide. Mobile apps, books, explore, subscription, and uh, regular content delivered to you via a newsletter and a navigation alert on a fairly regular basis. So are there any questions at this point, Kim? We do have one question for you uh, so far. Um, I do hear an echo. I'm not sure what's causing that right this, this exact moment. Hopefully that'll clear up. Um, before I go to the questions, sure. I do want to let our viewers know if you have a question, you can type that into the Q&A area on your Zoom panel. That's the easiest way for us to keep track of which questions we have answered. Um, you can also raise your hand and we can unmute your audio and you can then ask your question directly to Ed. And I would just would like to say thank you for these tools, Ed, because Waterway Guide Explorer is my go-to when I am sitting at my desk, unfortunately, instead of out on the water, answering questions for members. It's really my go-to resource to find the information that members are seeking. So I love when you get the word out there about it, um, because in addition to these paid tools, there are free tools that everyone really should be using for planning because um, that's the best place to get the answers. So thank you yes, for that. We're not, the, we're not the only place because we all use multiple resources, but we think we're the best. Yes, and one of the reasons I think actually Waterway Guide stands out is, is based on the answer to the first question that I'm going to, to read to you from the Q&A. So Maria would like to know, do you review the icons added for validity and what do you do to periodically check the accuracy of the listings? She has found that crowdsource data is not always reliable. I'm with you on that. Uh, we go out of our way to verify and validate and confirm the information. Uh, Ted has, as do I, have ongoing discussions as information comes in about uh, anchorages, marina reviews, et cetera. We, we can't say too much about a review. I mean, reviews are the bathroom's dirty. Uh, if I came to the bathroom and I had a bath in a week and a half, I wouldn't care if it's dirty. But um, so that's kind of subjective, uh, the reviews that we read. We verify to make sure that that person was there. Um, we confirm that their observations are, in fact, accurate. If they say a bridge is closed, we'll go back to the Coast Guard. I say, wait, Ted does most of this, goes back to the Coast Guard, the Army Corps of Engineers, local knowledge. So we go out of our way to verify every piece of information that comes in. 
How often do we review it to make sure that it's still accurate? We have all sorts of internal controls that are pinging us to say, go check this local notice to Mariners, go check this, update this, update that. But we also depend on the cruisers and the crowd to help us to be our eyes and ears out there. But I can assure you that if it's posted at Waterway Guide, we have verified it. If it's out of date and you find that it's out of date, let us know so that we can update it. Yeah. Okay, and kind of hand in hand with that, Ed, a uh, question from Bridget. How often are the NAV alerts updated and, and where does that feed or that information come from? Uh, well, I'm gonna let that. Go ahead, please. Yes. Um, I am on the site uh, uh, every day of the year, including holidays and weekends. I, uh, I regular, regularly review uh, the alerts, the reviews that are posted on site. Uh, on a new review or an alert that's submitted, it may take me up to two days to verify uh, the information. As far as um, uh, length of time or whether they're still valid, I go back and check through Notice to Mariners, Corps of Engineers sites, Department of Transportation sites, uh, various resources, uh, Parks Canada, New York Canal System, et cetera, et cetera, to determine whether alerts and other information are still valid. So it's an ongoing process that occurs every day. That very much so by, by a big team uh, of all of our editors. So that's where the navigation alerts come from. They also come from the, the observations of our folks who are out there. All right, we have a, a, a live question. Um, Joe Gursky has his hands raised. So uh, Joe, you should be able to unmute yourself now and go ahead and ask your question to Ed. Yes, Ed, we've been using Waterway Guides for years, the greatest books out there. But I just received an updated book for Chesapeake Bay, and it's not spiral bound anymore. That's correct. Yes, you're not going to spiral bound them. It's so hard to keep open now. We are going to spiral bound. We had a massive shift during the uh, pandemic printing year when things shut down. Our books were printed in China. Uh, for many years, we found that was the best price, Joe, um, and good quality. And we elected to pull our printing from China. Uh, in doing so, locating a printer in the United States that could give us what we needed in the time frame that we needed, we were not able to. So we went to a non-spiral bound for one year. Call it your um, pandemic collector's edition. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, we will go back to spiral. As a matter of fact, yeah, we're, we're going to go back to spiral edition. Um, next next year. They're, they're already coming out in spiral, but thanks for your observation on that. Uh, I found the best thing to do is just squash it flat and push it down there and it'll, it'll stay open for you. And then you'll mess up the bindery and everything on it. You'll have to buy a new one next year. All right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> thanks, Joe. Um, let's go to uh, John Marshall, who has his hands up. John, you should be able to unmute. Oh, yes. I had a question uh, about the uh, app uh, if you subscribe to the app does it come over to the water is it is the subscription the same across both platforms i guess is my question that's a very good question and since we just released the mobile app um no there is not we have a, a price break if you want to buy content in the app versus what you've done in subscription and a publishing company such as ours with the different user bases and the different platforms we've really as we've evolved, I would say struggled or certainly had to come to terms with the, the different ways in which people consume information. So print, we got that rock solid, no problem. Uh, when it comes to a computer-based technology, which is what I'm using to show you, we've got that covered, no problem. Then we came up with a way to deliver our content on a computer or on a mobile device using PDF uh, viewers. And now we've embedded our information into a mobile app, which allows you to download that content to your phone. It's kind of a different technology, you know, the phone. Um, so downloading that information, having it available. So they are different platforms and different ways of presenting it. Uh, I would submit to you, find the one that's favorite, your favorite and subscribe to that. Uh, and I hope I've answered your question, but there is a price break, but the mobile app does cost to, to download it to your phone versus the way in which you see it on a computer if you subscribe there with all the other benefits that, that come with it. What if you, what if you subscribe to the computer and then uh, log into the uh, app 
I mean, not the app. You would log into your computer, you know, your, on the Safari or whatever, on the browser. Uh, does that work? Uh, that's one question. The other question is if you do go with the uh, app uh, as a standalone, does it work? Uh, is that per device or does it cover multiple devices? So such as not multiple devices, multiple devices. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, kind of that, that family plan concept uh, is multiple. So uh, to answer your question, uh, once your name, uh, etillit at waterwayguide.com and my password, that cuts across, that goes across all my devices. If I'm, I'm subscribed to the mobile app, I'm subscribed to our online material, I have one single profile inside Waterway Guide. So first and foremost, I hope that answers your question. When you download the mobile app from the iOS store, you can, lo you can do that for free and then you can log in and, and be Part of that um, that component for uh, being able to submit reviews and other uh, information back to Waterway Guide, but you don't have to buy anything to download the app. If you decide to start buying content and have it downloaded to your mobile phone, yes, your credential will work the same way, and you will pay for that. If you subscribe to Waterway Guide and got all the content available through the subscription, say it's one hundred and sixteen dollar a year subscription level, and have all that content available, that will not show up on your mobile phone as downloadable. You can still look at it on your phone, of course, but I'm gonna tell you in no uncertain terms, the PDF viewer that's available for us to show that content is not as friendly on a mobile device as the new content that we formatted for the mobile device. What's the difference between the content on the, on the uh, monthly and the, uh, the annual? Okay, I didn't, couldn't really tell from the description. Yeah, okay, the, the difference is when you look at the content in the monthly subscription at waterwayguide.com, you're looking at a PDF output of that book for that year. When you look at the content on the Waterway Guide mobile app, you're looking at it in a new format. We've taken that content, reformatted it, optimized it for a mobile phone so that it works best. Plus there's a whole different set of functionality in the mobile app. All we're trying to do is create multiple platforms so that anyone who has a favorite particular way of receiving information gravitates to that and we don't lose that opportunity to give you the information you need. Does that answer the question? I think it does, Ed, and just, just to confirm that the content is the same regardless of whether you download it through the app, subscribe via the website, or purchase the books. Is that correct? But it looks, but it looks different in the app. Yes, the actual information is the same, but it's, it's presented to you in a way that is friendly to whatever mode you're using. And all the navigation alerts, marinas, bridges and locks, all that stuff that I was showing you earlier, that's also in the app, except it's not on a chart, it's only on a map. Okay, we have several different questions about the pricing. Um, we did see when you were kind of doing the demo that there were two levels of the subscription, plus there's the monthly option. Can you just tell us what's the difference between those different subscription levels? Yes, let me, uh, am I still sharing screen? Uh, yes, yes, you, you are. are. Okay, let me go to subscribe. And there's a little matrix here that'll show everything that you need. Just scroll down, there it is. So all the check marks, just read all of these. I don't need to read them to you. Just go to the subscription up in the upper left and that will give you the distinguishing characteristics of each of the levels. All right. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, I, again, I don't need to read it. The difference is you, the more you spend, the more you get. And we also have a question uh, regarding pricing. Are there any discounts available? So you do uh, very generously on the books offer a 20% discount to members of AGLCA. Are there any discounts for the electronic delivery modes? Ed, do we have that? I can't uh, remember. Not set up, no. No, it's not set up. At this point, there, there is no discount for AGLCA in the subscription that we know of, but we can, we can be talked into anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Kim knows that. If, if, <laughs> if we want to offer up an AGLCA discount for a subscription, we would be more than happy to discuss that. Of course. We'll, we'll work on that with you. <laughs> our members love discounts from our sponsors. Yeah. Um, uh, April is wondering, that, what's your um, impression on whether do most people get paper copies as well as the electronic? Um, you know, when you're cruising, sometimes having the paper in front of you is a little bit easier. Do some people do both or does most yes, people yes, pick one do. or the other? Okay. And in this premium edition, you can not only get access to all of the digital content, all of the content from all of the books available to you, but you also get two books of your choice with the premium $116 a year edition. So, but to answer your question, yes, I keep books, I keep the mobile app, I keep Explorer, I keep 
as many resources as I can, because sometimes I'm just tired of looking at a computer screen and I want to read a book and I just flip right. the pages and I read and I mark what I want to, and I use the book on the helm. So it's really personal preference, but we are selling more books than we've ever sold before because people like to have them. Yes. Yeah. Um, and Ronald asked, uh, mentioned he just ordered the Southern route uh, this morning. Um, he said mobile, but I don't know if he means he ordered it on his mobile or if he, the Southern route covers mobile as well, <laughs> mobile, Alabama. Um, I'm thinking he's asking about the mobile version, but he's wondering if he should have done a subscription instead. And it sounds like that also is, is kind of personal preference. It really is personal preference. I think that the, if you're a mobile app kind of guy, um, you did not make it, you did not make a mistake then you can, everything that I showed you on Explorer a moment ago, except for the books in PDF format, everything that I showed you is no charge. So all the navigation alerts, all the marinas, all the bridges and locks, all that information has always been delivered up at no charge. It's our service to the voting community. It is supported by you having a hard copy of the book, or in this case now, if you bought it on the mobile phone or your mobile app, then you also have that printed text uh, downloaded to your phone. Now, I will tell you, if you download the mobile app and you find a block of text or a chapter or a whole book that you want uh, available, and when you're in an offline capability, hit the little bookmark download button and make sure the content comes to your phone so that you can see it if you are disconnected. Okay. We've got about two minutes and about four questions left. Um, what, the fifth one just popped in. Um, these are pretty much all yes, no questions. So hopefully we can run through them and get them all answered. Um, first one, do you cover the upper Mississippi? Ted? Cover the upper Mississippi as far north as Grafton. In, in print book or on, on um, Explore? The in question print, wasn't specific, so okay, maybe if you can print, answer quickly on both of those. In, in print, it's covered, the upper Mississippi is covered up to Grafton. I am in the process of adding information on the total upper Mississippi into Explore. So by the end of the summer, we will have uh, all marinas, bridges, locks, um, navigational information and everything like that on all of the river system in Explorer. Okay, perfect. So that would include the upper Mississippi, the lower Mississippi, the Arkansas, et cetera. Okay, uh, next question. So there's no actual navigation capabilities inside waterway guides. You can't use it for route planning, correct? That is correct. Okay, um, next question. However, what however the Mm -hmm. However, the data that's in Explorer is exported, as Ed said earlier, to programs like AquaMap, iNavX, et cetera. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Ted. Um, when will the Chesapeake Bay Volumes 1 and 2 be available? They've been shown as pre-orders for quite some time. Chesapeake Bay or Great Lakes? Uh, the question said Chesapeake Bay. We only Chesapeake. have one edition of Chesapeake Bay, and that's, that's out. So Great Lakes... Great Lakes is great. I think Great Lakes is at the printer, isn't it, Ted? Yes, it is. So okay, so great, great if Lakes, it was about Great Lakes, Lakes, there's your answer. Any day, um, any day now. You mentioned that with the premium subscription that you get two free books of your choice. Is that, the uh, question is, is that two free books per, for each year of the premium subscription or is it a one time? Each year. Each year. Okay, and then the final question before we wrap up real quickly. Um, Nelson says, if he's ordered the books, will they show up in the library on the app? I'm thinking that's no, because it's a separate subscription or a separate purchase. Yeah, separate platform, separate subscription. That's correct. Okay. Although it's a good idea, and we're working on that. I know exactly where you're going. It would be awfully nice when you bought that book to say, I bought the book, and now I have access to the app. So we're working on that. Thank you. Excellent. Um, Ed Tillich with Waterway Guide, Ted Staley also with Waterway Guide. Thank you for joining us and for sharing those details. It's been enlightening. Um, and as you. I said, I am a, a very much a big fan of Waterway Guide. It's what I use to answer questions all of the time. So thank you for those resources and will you thank you for your sponsorship. And if there are more questions, just send them to me. Yep. Excellent. Thank you, Ted. We appreciate that. And I'm with that. I share screen. Thanks, Kim. It was good seeing you. Thanks so much. Thank you, We're Ed. Gonna, I'm going to leave the meeting. Us. Get here to the boatyard. Thanks. All right. Have fun.